with about 80 or 90 tanks in the fish barn, there's a wide variety of species that I'm extremely fond of. I did start thinking about, however, if I had to get rid of all the fish tanks and was only allowed to keep five species. Going through the list of fish, there were definitely a lot of tough choices to make, but I did come up with five fish that I would keep. So let me go through the five fish that made the cut and tell you why I'd keep them. Since I do keep quite a few rare fish in the barn, one of the major considerations I took in making this list is lineage, or the collection point of the particular species. And this was one of the main reasons I decided to keep this group of Amica Splendens. This group of fish was from the original Robert Rush Miller collection at the University of Michigan and were collected in 1966, making them one of the oldest Gidead collections that we have in the hobby. The majority of Gidead species that we have in the hobby today have originated from Robert Rush Miller and the University of Michigan. And since I'm a big fan of history and preserving that history, I really feel it's my duty to keep these fish in the top five and have this lineage in the hobby for generations to come. The same sentiments can be echoed for these Xenotoka Aizenai as well. I recently purchased these fish at the Triple Crown Convention auction, and this collection of Aizenai is the oldest in the hobby, having been collected by Robert Rush Miller in 1955 in Nayarit, Mexico. Of all the fish that I picked up for the fish room at the Triple Crown, I feel this fish was the crowd jewel of all the fish that I picked up. Echoing the same sentiment as before, there really is a sense of history and keeping history alive with having these fish in the hobby, breeding them, and getting them out to some of my other fellow fish keepers. Ever since these fish have arrived in my fish room, my group of Cyprochromus leptosoma blue flash have held a special place in my heart. I really enjoy these fish for a multitude of reasons. The most obvious being the striking colors on the males with their silver bodies and awesome blue sheens. I really think these fish could rival anything that you'd find in saltwater. I also really enjoy their behavior with their shoaling behavior and how they interact with one another. It's really fun to just sit and watch their tank and watch them interact. I've had these fish for about a year now and these have quickly become one of the jewels in my fish room and I really couldn't see having a fish room without these fish being included. I have said in numerous videos that my Variatus platys from Rio Coaquilco are some of my favorite fish in my fish room. In fact, I even have two different groups of this fish with one being from the collection at Texas A&M University. What really makes this fish stand out to me is its cool speckling along with its tail color, which could either be red, yellow, or clear. My personal favorite are the red tails, but they're all pretty beautiful. What really puts this fish in the top five for me is its unique coloration, along with being a rare wild type live bearer, which is not something that's found too often in the hobby. So let's talk about the most difficult choice, which was the fifth fish. There were quite a few candidates, but I decided to go with the Iliadan Whitey Eye. Much like the two species we talked about in the beginning, what makes these fish special is their lineage. These fish came from the House de Mares in Europe and came with a certificate of authenticity. I was able to get these fish at the Chicago Rare Live Bear auction last March. I'm really happy to have them. I've only seen a fish with this lineage at one other auction, so it really makes me want to get this fish breeding and get it out to my fellow hobbyist. This is another fish that speaks to me due to its lineage and its limited availability in the hobby. So this is what I want to keep, breed, and get out to all my fellow fish keepers. I hope you enjoyed taking a look today at the species that I would keep if I were only limited to five. I really thought it was an interesting exercise to go through because it really did make me think about the conservation side of my hobby as well as the fish that I personally enjoy. Some of these were really tough to think about but were definitely a lot of fun. So let me know in the comments section if you agree with my choices or if you watch some of my fish room tours or latest fish unboxings and think I should keep something different. So that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.